Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Light the Torch podcast. I am your host, B. Jones, and I got my boys with me. To the left, uh, we think Blackie Chan is there. Not quite sure yet. Uh, Blackie Chan, you there? Yep, I'm here. All right, Blackie Chan is here. <laughs> to the right, I got my boy, Raul. Bottom left, we got our guy, Tyler. Oh. In the bottom right, we got none other than Mr. Gunnar Atterbury. So, oh, dog there you go. Okay, okay, I see Blackie Chan. You know, that's what the big surprise was, huh? <laughs> the back of it, yeah. No, okay. you're getting better, you ain't right. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we'll be talking a lot about him today. Uh, we got, you got some transfer portal updates. Um, Tim Prankley will be joining us shortly, man. I'm sure he's in traffic. Oh, there he is, oh, right on time. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there you go. All right, guys, man, man, the man. I'm late. So, this is Tim Prankley, I just got here. Hey, no we hey, Tim. Appreciate you joining us, Tim. Give me one sec if you could. Yeah. All right. So while we're waiting, man, John, you got your uh, presentation ready? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I like Shane, you want to put it up? Yeah, go ahead and kick it you off. You want to do it right now? Yep. Yeah, All let's right. do it. All right. One second. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. So while he's getting that up, and we could flip through uh, all of them, or we talk each individual. Um, my thought was each individual, but yeah, basically we have about a few visits officially uh, from a portal uh, standpoint. So first one is a greedy Vance Jr. He's a DB, more of a nickel guy coming from FSU. Uh, so he'll be visiting, as you can see, those dates up there. Um, so are, you know, what are some of the thoughts on, I guess the, the team looking at like, a you know, uh, another nickel guy and, you know, obviously Fagan's left, right. So it sounds like he's, they're trying to replace him potentially. What are some of your guys' thoughts? I was actually surprised by this. And, um, I think we're pretty strong in the secondary. I wasn't yeah. expecting us to go out there another DB, but, um, Green Vance is, he's solid, man. I, I'm not mad at it at all. Yeah, yeah like, I mean, I I kind of feel the same way. Like I was I was surprised. I thought that our our back, you know, our, our corners and our, our secondary overall was was pretty solid. And um, yeah, losing Fagans, um, you know, you need potentially another body. But it seems like Prophet Brown is playing pretty well in spring, and looks like he's the one ready to kind of take the the nickel spot. And so I I've been surprised to hear Lincoln be so vocal about how he wants somebody in the secondary um normally he plays the you know coach speak stuff pretty you know pretty well and so to say that he really wanted somebody back there was was definitely surprising for me so we'll see what happens okay. I'm, I'm loving this new lincoln riley 2.0 talking defense kind of guy he he's he's not afraid to like like he'll he'll give coach speak every once in a while but like when it comes to like talking about like the defense and all that stuff, he's he's pretty vocal that he w- wants people that want to be here. He wants size. He wants speed. He said he said that in the uh, two four seven interview today. So he he he's definitely changed from last year when it comes to his interviews. He does uh, voice some of his wants and needs. Right. Yeah. The next. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dan, you have thoughts real quick. Sorry, jump in. No, I was going to ask Brett Chan. He didn't give his thoughts on Greedy Vance. Uh. Oh, uh, honestly, like, uh, I'm just, I haven't really seen too much of his, his tape yet, but it's just going to be interesting uh, seeing that uh, he's also a Southern boy. So that's, that's another plus that we're, we're still uh, keeping up the trend of going to SEC country, uh, getting these boys. So, yeah, some I didn't mention. Uh, he, he went to, the same high school as uh, Coach Henny, so that's right. pretty interesting. Oh. It's kind of that connection with with that. So nice. Um, that was pretty cool to to find out. Edna Carr High School. Okay. Edna Carr turns out some some good guys, man. They they got a good program over there. Louisiana. What do you oh. think, Tim? What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I really know very little about him, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> no worries. Just getting out the freeway, for getting back from practice, an hour and a half. <laughs> um, uh, 
You, you know, as, as far as the portal, I'm just looking up front. That's all really I'm you know, concerned about. We can add depth in any one of the positions, but I'm really happy the secondary right now. Right. right. Perfect. Well, the next guy is a D lineman. Uh, it is Dayon Hayes coming from Pitt. Uh, more of a, a DN type of guy, uh, 250, 260. Um, you know, very solid uh, guy. Good stats. Uh, was very um, competitive over there, obviously. And so I think this could be a good get. Um, we're obviously pretty solid i think at the dm but you know there could be arguments there but yeah what are some of your thoughts on on this this visit here uh just like, uh, just like yeah you, you know, know if you, you guys will let me know these names i could do a little homework but I, you guys, you come in here blind with a bunch of guys that really i've never seen tape on don't really know much about but um and i don't put a lot of stock in somebody's uh you know 247 national 187th ranking but I, I tell you what, another position I'm not too concerned about would be the, the defensive end position here at USC. I think we've done well. We move a little more inside to the defensive tackle. Then you'll get my interest. Uh, I'm right there with you, Tim. I pretty much said the same thing when uh, when I saw him. Like, okay, we're going after another. I'm not sure if he's playing end or edge. You know, at 260, he'll probably play edge you know, more than – unless they plan on putting a little weight on him. But, um, yeah, we're, we're deep at both of those positions. I was – Kind of shocked by this one as well, but um, the guy's definitely a baller. Though. I did see a little bit of his film. He can, he can go, so I'm not mad at that. I mean, it's always unless you know we anticipate somebody in that room probably leaving out because it's so stacked. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I guess we have to wait and see on that one. I'm just waiting for the head coach to to scream tampering. <laughs> oh, Narduzzi. <laughs> yeah, yeah just waiting for that. Gonna cry, man. <laughs> Tampering, <laughs> but he was in the transfer portal. Tampering, all right. It looks like he has uh, the transfer portal hasn't updated with him being on there. I'm trying to look for some tape on him, uh, but I mean, he, he definitely looks from from seeing the tape and his stats. He he definitely seems that you know he can produce. But kind of what Tim mentioned, I think that we're pretty much set in that position as well. We have a bunch of players that can fill in that spot i don't think it's necessary we should focus more on the on the interior rather than on the on the edge side yeah. i think the next people that are going to be coming up we'll, we we will be kind of familiar with them so don't worry about that for right now yeah the next guy is a uh, big d lineman uh size wise uh jermaine lole i think is how you say the last yeah. name yeah. um Good to hear that I got that right. Yeah, uh, Cali, Cali kid uh, went to ASU, then Louisville. So he's been around the block a little bit. Um, so this guy, he's he's getting the last visit, April 26th. He's got some in, in front of us, so we'll see if he can make it there. Uh, but that's just something to keep in keep in mind. Right. Tim, you got thoughts on Lele? Well, he's, he's that piece, right, we're looking for. That is that piece that we want and like. Uh, whether he's going to be coming to SC or not, I, I, I've learned a lot. I'm about you guys, but I've, I've really um, learned a lesson about the transfer portal. Is that I don't, I don't get my hopes about any of this stuff. Yeah. I'm, just telling you, I'm just telling you right now that it's, it's worse than recruiting. How fickle this thing is. This guy <laughs> might go to one visit, get the right check, and he's bam, he's done. So I mean, yeah. we, we don't know. We really don't know what um, is going to come of all these visits. It's great that we have a lot of interest. Uh, it'll be. I'll be a little more excited again. With the guys that are showing up and you know, the guys that are coming to the spring game. You know, guys are going to be here. You know, maybe some names. I, I want to hear the names we don't know yet. That's going to be the one. The guys just showing up out of the blue. Those are the guys you're probably going to be looking at uh, for USC. Uh, yeah, get, pulling in someone. Well, I just talked about what you guys were talking about. You need that big run stuff or we lost rake. So you need that guy in the middle. It's going to cause trouble. That's fine. Yeah, man. I mean, that's 63310. You better be able to. Uh... Take on a couple blocks, man. <laughs> you know, what I mean? free up bear. That's all we're looking for, man. But uh, if you can go get your own, that's even better. But yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So go ahead. Uh, I'm just, I'm just hoping that uh, the Kamari Ramsey and the John Humphreys and that uh, Danton Lynn uh, relationship is still strong that they can reel them in. But uh, someone in our chat was saying that uh, there's rumors that uh, 
he's gone to Texas. Oh, oh no, oh, that's, that's sorry, that was, that was Jay Toy. Yeah. Never mind, my bad. But yeah, like, really hope we can like the whole news about uh, uh, Williams not taking a trip here kind of hurt. So I'm hoping we can really seal the deal with two two of these uh, linemen here because we could we definitely could use it. Yeah, I know he was rumored to potentially be interested in USC. Uh, what was it like two years ago? Yeah, when um, Lincoln Riley initially got hired. So I know he's a hometown kid from Long Beach Poly. He's a big guy. I know he's had a couple of down years, and it was due to injury. So if he is healthy, I think he can definitely be a, a difference maker this season, um, especially with the with the coaching staff that we have, Coach Henny. I'm sure he'll teach him a few things and potentially be a, a positive uh, addition if we are able to get his commitment. Yep. So another note is he's also a class of 2018. So really? Oh, okay. Wow. Well, yeah. So he's a grown man out here. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, tribute, man. If he's healthy. <laughs> so do we know if he's going to be more like? Has Has anyone said if he's leaning towards NIL related or just the best situation? Like, have we? Yeah, heard I, I haven't heard much. Yeah, I haven't heard much like inside on on this on him particularly. So. I'll tell you guys, like, um, just like Tim said, man. Even if you're not looking for NIO, if NIO <laughs> that that bag is presented to you, you're not going to turn it down. Yeah. So <laughs> whether you're looking for it or not, man. And if you're not looking for that that bump from you know Coach Henny coming in, if you if you're not the guy thinking NFL caliber development, then do we really want that person on uh, coming to USC anyway? So yeah. uh, if guys are chasing bags to go to lesser uh, coaching and lesser development, then. I think that says it all for you right there. Yep. Yeah. But we, we've we been known to uh, throw the bag, or I don't know what the bag was, but with transfer portals uh, back in the day, so, or last year, the year before that. But it's just like, this is, I feel like this is the time that House of Victory should be able to flex its muscles at this point. If that money is there, they've been talking about defensive, t- you know, they've been talking before Rakes left. Where you, know, you heard, uh, Coach Riley talking about we need the, to to buff up the the defensive uh, uh, line, with the, yep. especially defensive tackle position and 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 the um, nose tackle. We knew that going into all this before rakes. So I'm sure there's a nice check already cut for whoever wants to be our number one, you know, prime choice uh, out there. They're they're gonna put the they're gonna put the money in. Is be the right guy. And I I'm I'm really not too concerned about it. I do believe they probably know who they're gonna get, uh, and and they're gonna put the money there for them. So. At least two, if not three. Oh, yeah. You're making yeah. me feel better there, Tom. Because, but uh, hey, listen, I don't have any information. Uh, maybe <laughs> Jay might have information, but I don't have any information. Uh, if, uh, if you want to check with him, he might know. But I, I'm saying you there. There's going to be uh, after this week. I mean, not everyone's out yet. You watch that. You know, as soon as the spring right. games all play out, you know, s- spring is winding down. There's going to be some guys, maybe even the guys who don't think right away, but they're going to start getting in their heads a little bit. They're like, oh, man, you know what? I'm, I'm going to see what's out there. And right. you're going to see a lot of names pop out. And a lot of them, I'm saying, everyone's freaking out about who's not coming, who's visiting, who's visiting, when, et cetera. Don't worry about that stuff. It's going to be about who's, at the end of the day, who comes in to visit SC. And I think the names we're going to like are names we're not even hearing yet. Yeah. I like it. I like it. All right. Well, uh, Blackie, we could definitely probably go through just – Skim through these, but yeah, it's just some interest targets with some from what I've been hearing and stuff. So Keandre Lambert Smith, wide receiver from Penn State. Um, you know, people are saying that we're kind of in the mix right now. He's got some visits elsewhere right now, obviously. So we'll see what happens there. Uh next guy. Uh Carmani McLean had to ju- had to add him just for the views a little bit and the clicks. Um uh, sounds like USC at USF, but I- I'm here in USF probably he's the guy. Um, he has a close relationship with the cornerbacks coach there, but just interesting to hear that we have been doing our homework on the kids. So um, he, he does, he fits the the mold that we want from a, you know, size perspective. Uh, Have, hasn't, next, it been, yep. hasn't it been, there's like, uh, like I said, rumors about him potentially not trying to put in the work or whatnot. And I don't know how truthful they are, but. Right. Correct. That, that has been, Discussed as well has been brought up yeah, on, on social media and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that, that's and also uh, Dion even kind of hinted towards that uh, in some press conferences. So 
that we got to take that with a grain of salt. We don't know what goes on at practice, but if a head coach is saying that, then there's you would think there would be some truth behind it. Definitely, definitely. Sounds like to uh, me, you just had a little trouble adjusting to college. Well, like I think, I think someone was saying that he was over the circus that was going on at uh, CU. Well, that could be too. <laughs> I'm sure that's coming from his end. Yeah. So uh, next guy is uh, Jay. Fairly uh, well. Very, very familiar face. He was obviously with us for a little bit and then went to UCLA. He he has entered. So he's, you know, some interest. There's a lot of Texas smoke right now with him. We'll see what transpires with that. Um, next guy is Kyle Ford. Another he put know, out a top six. We're one of the, 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 the teams in the six. We'll see again what happens. We're, we are going to add wide receivers right for depth purposes and and because we like to rotate and and produce so we'll see if he that that happens to be a guy for us I, honestly i would well i would welcome him back i would like to see kyle ford back absolutely yeah, he didn't leave on bad terms and then you guys you got to respect the fact that he, he got his degree right i'm pretty sure he had his degree yeah. and and then he went to go get some some film he wasn't going to get at usc and now and now usc didn't need, didn't really need that depth, but this year they do need depth, and then you respect if you want to come back. I think it'd be a funny story again if you can get Jay Toya and and Kyle Ford back. That that that'd be hilarious to me because it just doesn't seem like anything over in UCLA. If we want it, we just go and take it. So I mean, I think it comes down to is is there a need and who who are they looking at? Yep. And I was gonna kind of go back to Toya. What do you guys think on him? Yep. Like, you guys would be okay with uh, taking him if we were to get him? Yeah. The position of depth we need. I mean, yep. I'm that, hoping again. I'm system. just hoping there's bigger fish that are out there to get. Yeah, and Lynn knows him very well. So if he wants him, and if he if we can get him, then why not? And I don't know where I saw it, but either it was in our chat or whatnot. But I think someone mentioned that potentially he was going to be at practice today at USC. I don't know how truthful that is or not, but yeah, what's uh, their practice? Twitter, yeah, I don't think it was. Yeah, I don't think it was. So Tim would know. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, Tim would I, I, I don't know. I didn't go. Disclosed. I didn't go to the beginning of practice, so I didn't see right. the. You know, right. um, right. it, but after practice, I was there. You know, about twenty minutes before practice ended, and I didn't see him leave. Yeah. See, solo dolo. Okay, I didn't want to say it, but yeah, he, he kind of has. A, he has a long neck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, next guy is um, uh, Simon Barrow Jr. from Michigan State. Um, is it Simeon? Simeon. Simeon. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Sorry, not good with the names, but uh, yeah, you know, D line, D tackle type of guy, big body that we want. Um, I haven't heard a lot with us in USC. I just know that um, Coach Henny is trying to get in contact with this guy. So. Um, we'll see if anything transpires with that. Rakes was what three thirteen. Let's set the limit at three thirteen and above. <laughs> yep. Yeah, 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 right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um. So this one, um, this one's just I guess you could say a wish list type of thing on just on my end maybe. Um. So a uh, tackle that went to Houston was going to go to Louisville. Just went back into the portal because of some of their um I guess issues over there. Uh, he's, he plays right tackle, played there at Houston. So, I mean, we, we need a right tackle. I think he's got one year left. Um, so just, just throwing that out there. I haven't heard much in general for tackles and offensive players um, so far. Again, there's still a lot of time left in this portal. Yeah, just somebody to throw out there from, from a tackle standpoint. And then lastly is uh, somebody that we, we saw – uh, he's he's up to 315 now, uh, Tim. I know it says 295, but uh, uh, Hakeem, uh, he was he was at Houston. He was part of Belk's defense, so hopefully that you know there's the connection there. We'll see if uh, Belk gives the thumbs up. But, I mean, it's just a body, but obviously we want probably more in, impactful players. No disrespect to Hakeem there, um, but uh, yeah, just somebody just to kind of throw out there for us. He's a he's a veteran. He didn't he like start. Yes. Like, uh, like all games or something like that. I can't. Yeah, last two years too. Like he was, he was consistent from that standpoint. He wasn't getting hurt or anything. So, 
a lot of people are downplaying rakes, say, making comments about his work ethic, et cetera, blah, blah, I, all this stuff, right? All I know is a guy played, I talked about it on my show, guy played running back in high school as a senior. You know, that shows you how athletic he is. That shows you how his lateral movement is. That shows you how dynamic athletic he is. Uh, for, for you to lose someone that big, like I said, you lose someone that over 310 pounds that can move like that and is that athletic. I don't want just a big boy in the middle. I want a guy that's going to be a difference maker because you need that difference maker yes. so you're not having bare double and triple team. That's that's what you're going to – this, yeah. this defense needs someone there that's not just going to be – Somebody's gonna fill space. It's gonna have to be somebody who's going to be a disruptor, whether that's if it's gonna push the pocket or if they're gonna drag another double team so Bears not double and triple teamed. That's what they need. If we just put a 310 pound body or 308 pound body out there, it's gonna allow that's unathletic. It's just gonna allow them to double team Bear and kind of be kind yeah. of We can't just like slap someone out, out there and expect them to take all the all the uh what is it called attention from bear so we need someone that is on par better or anything just they need to be able to disrupt them so yeah there's a difference between a plug and a playmaker and the guy that's a plug is the second unit guy that can make sure that the offensive line doesn't get the push into the second level and he takes on a double team and then a playmaker is the guy that's going to push the pocket backwards and be able to make a difference. And there are not a lot of those guys that are in the portal right now. And that's what we need. And, you know, Bear is going to be able to have the opportunities that he had when he was a part of Georgia's defensive line, then we need to have a playmaker next to him, not just a plug. So this is when, you know, we, we can't miss like this, this needs to be, you know, DEFCON one, this is the most important thing. Like Tim said, yeah, I don't, I don't really care about, the rest of these guys in the portal, like obviously, you know, we're going to welcome them. We're going to happy to just have, but they're, they're not going to move the needle here in terms of, you know, wins when it gets to, you know, October, November to get wins. We need to, we need to address this gaping hole that's at the nose tackle in our defensive line right now. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Really quick. Uh, I want to give a shout out to everyone that's in our in our uh, on our stream right now. We have seventy one, but hey, we only have fourteen likes. So go ahead and oh, hit that like button. Get us get us at least halfway to seventy one that we have right now. So, <laughs> but so I guess so. When it's all said and done with the portal, what positions do you think we end up filling filling in uh, by the time it closes? Maybe you guys had a guess what type of positions we will end up getting i'll bet you it's going to be what well, it's going to be de- it's tackle tackle receiver so defensive tackle offensive tackle receiver multiple probably at the defensive tackle position um and then just best available i mean if there's if there comes there's somebody you know if they are is it like a cormani complaint uh mclean or something like that who, who's a who's a difference maker in a position they feel it's going to fit the roster then that's your wild cards and there's going, there are going to be those guys. I mean, how many of us really going into early, you know, until the rumors start floating about Jordan Addison? I mean, who who, who thought you're going to get someone like that, or, or who thought that you know early on you know, that we were getting a Bear Alexander? So th- those names both came out after the spring, and uh, you, you you're going to have to look to see if who's going to be available. There there will be guys that maybe aren't on the radar right now. But there are guys in the schools that are stacked, and they're going to see the depth chart, and they're going to go, "All right, I want to go make some money. I'm I'm out of here." And that's where USC, I think, is to swoop in and grab someone that's going to be a significant playmaker. Yep. When uh, when do they have uh, to get into the portal again? I think the thirtieth. Yeah, they got yeah the thirtieth. Okay, so a week still. Yeah, we have, yeah, we have a week or so. So I don't know. It's just uh, it, it's not it's not uh, what is it called freak out time but like i I just this will definitely show uh where usc will be able to flex their muscles when it comes to nil and how uh our new defensive staff can recruit out of the transfer portal like they've shown that they've been able to recruit the high school level now we just need to get some of these more veteran guys and remember that's just to enter the portal i mean i know the panel knows that but anyone in the in the chat it's just to it's just to enter your name into the portal you have until the thirtieth. Right. So uh, the process will be drawn out with with I'm sure negotiations and 
and visits, but they, initially what you're looking at is they'll have yeah, a full week after spring ball. Well, actually, after that Monday. So, I mean, you have, they have a full week just to decide, you know, is this where I want to be after seeing how they played in their spring game or what, what the depth chart's looking like? Because at this point, they should have a pretty good idea of what they're going to be looking at going into fall camp uh, at the end of spring camp. True. And uh, right on, Sam, for uh, thanks for uh, showing up to the podcast today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. So yeah, like I mean, yeah, I mean, if, if we go back and kind of just recap it, like the last two years, we've gotten someone that we never anticipated that we were going to get, and I don't foresee the improvements that we've all seen in NIL to make that be any sort of a detriment to us. If anything, that's going to just enhance our chances of being able to get some sort of playmaking chain game changing type of talent on this team. And whether it's some tackle that we just never thought was going to enter the portal or, you know, some nose that's three thirty, that's a difference maker that, you know, was some all conference guy. It's going to be somebody that, you know, we're, we're I, I doubt that we're, you know, we were talking about this last week. I doubt we're going to go in, you know, with the, the guys that we have, it's been talked about for a long time. So it's going to be addressed. We just patience and, and it'll, it'll, it'll solve itself. It'll figure itself out. So are we officially out of the running for Dominique Williams? I know we were, there was a bunch of rumors. Until that, guy, until that guy commits somewhere and he steps on campus and stays on campus. No, like, it, it he's we're not out of it like he's gonna go a bunch of different places until he actually decides he wants to go like we wanted jamari caldwell and he ended up going to oregon you know same thing like until they decide that they want to go somewhere it's going to be crazy for the next couple of weeks so we'll just like let it just settle itself down and figure it out no that's a position of priority as well i yeah. mean yeah. Uh, so, someone in the chat said, you know, Elijah, I'm a huge Elijah Hughes fan, but I, he, we're talking about we want someone has a little more. We, we want someone with some more size. He's getting bigger. He's got to get big. Uh, he's not our, that 310 piece that we're, we're looking at. So, um, yeah, kid's amazing. I, mean, I, I, I love I mean, you saw he flashed last year. He's he, he's a hell of an athlete. He's got, you know, he's get that get off. He, he's he is a, a solid guy. He will be used. He will flash this year. But if we're talking about a guy that's gonna give you lots of reps and do what we talked about, you know, taking on those tackles, you know, being being a disruptor, maybe requiring a double team, maybe able to absorb some of those blocks that allows other guys to get um, off and, and open. I'm not sure if that's gonna be the situation uh, every down in down out when they're pounding the ball on us. You're not gonna want to have a guy that's, you know, uh, 290 there, and then you got and then you got a guard that's 320 pushing him all over the field. That's that's not what you're gonna want to see, you know. So. Keep that in mind. All right, so that's going to wrap up our transfer portal talks. Uh, we're going to move on to recruiting. You got, you got a visitors list for us? Yeah, I mean, it's not a big list. Uh, I don't know if uh, Black Chan put something together, but basically um, the five-star tackle, Andrew. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, he is going to be – he visited today. He'll be at the spring game as well. And then we have three 2026 players right now that have been confirmed, Jakeem Stewart, Bryce Perry Wright, and then uh, Ryder's Lions, Walker – or Ryder Lions, uh, Walker's uh, brother. So I'm assuming, you know, more of the, the local uh, kids as well uh, will, will be at the game. So more to come probably from our, you know, 247 insiders and one insider. So, you know. Keep a lookout on there over there on uh, the socials, but um, at least at least it's good to hear those uh, those three twenty twenty six players. A lot of stars there. There's a lot of a lot of uh, star power in, in, in the guys you just named. So yeah. Um, yeah, I again I used to be I'm not gonna lie I used to be a huge recruit I I was the biggest especially when it was like the the original um, the uh, first was it first Tuesday and I I can't remember it's been so long now since they got. They brought in the, the early signing day, but it, that that was the greatest thing in the whole world. As soon as NIL and the early signing day just kind of ripped everything apart, I mean, I, yeah. come on. I mean, it's so hard for me. I know. I don't hate to be Debbie Downer here, but it's just so hard for me to get up and start following these guys because 99% of them will never play Cardinal and Gold. And, I, and once I once that started ticking, ticking in my head, uh, you know, I, I kind of backed away from it. It's, it's great, though. Here, here's one thing I will say. Uh, you're getting early traction with these guys, and it's great to see 
guys interested in the program. That's the most important. That's yeah. my biggest takeaway is these big yeah. national names are interested in the program, whether they are coming. You know, I think Lions is going to end up at USC. I do. I'm, you know, whatever. But I mean, um, as far as the rest of the guys, it's just so hard these days to get excited because there's so many last minute flips that yeah. um, I, I got tired of, of letting 17 year olds decide what my week was going to be like. So I stopped following her like, <laughs> almost completely, really, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I used to watch all like the broadcasts of when they were doing the commitment uh, in February. I would have them all up. I was like, okay, all right. And I, I would like panic or whatever, like thinking like, oh my God, we really need them. And it would kind of like ruin my whole day if we lose out on someone that was like uh, Matt Iteo. I remember just like, uh, he's coming to USC and then he just flips on us and uh, that, that hurt. But then I'm just like kind of got to the point where it's just like, it's de- I'm desensitized to it until they sign that NIL and they're on campus. Then that's when I'm okay. That's when I'm happy. Yeah. And all that uncle, uncle Phil money last minute, yeah. Bull crap that, that I've dealt with over the past like seven, eight years. <laughs> I'm, I'm so good. You want to go up and spend your life in Eugene, yo, kid. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm right behind you. Good job. I'm not going to root for your team, but I, you know, hey, listen, go get what you get. Go, go, go make something grave yourself. But man, you're, you're missing out a great opportunity. And especially now more than ever, maybe three, four years ago, it was questionable. But now there's absolutely no, I'm sorry, these, these lists that have Dan Landing in the top five coaches in the country it just makes me shake with anger i'm like who, who, who are these idiots that are saying that dan lanning the top five coach in, in college football it's it's it's, a, it's amazing to me so if the you go up that, if, oh go ahead sorry no i'm just saying if, if you want to go up there and play football in eugene all right i know sc's not for everybody but jesus eugene i mean come on man come on uh, <laughs> come on guys tim is stating facts you go follow the guy he knows his stuff yeah. speaking straight facts here it's just the fact that he has one down season and everyone just kicks him yeah. out of the whole top 10 of uh, best coaches going on. Like, you guys really were ho- like waiting for the moment that he has less than a 10 uh, win season. Like, yes, he has that. He, he has an eight or seven and whatever season. He's like, yes, we finally can knock him out. And we can say, told you so. Lincoln Riley sucks, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm going to calm down right now before I start going into a. A ramp right now, but oh, ventilating, man. Thanks. The, the worst part is, is all these most of them because a lot of these guys, these national guys, are, are spouting this ridiculous stuff. Is is they are they're they know their stuff. That's what's frustrating. They know what they're saying. It, it's it's for clicks or what whatever reason they're doing it for. But but they know that the guys that they're putting ahead of of um, Coach Riley uh, couldn't even carry his jock strap, and and but they do it anyway. Uh, that's what's so frustrating. Uh, the resumes that the people are putting in front of them are, are just absurd. I mean, even even like guys like Brian Kelly, they keep rolling out there. Brian Kelly would just every four years have this great offensive line and go on a run. You know, that's basically what Brian Kelly's career has been. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Beating up all the teams he should beat and then losing to the teams and not winning anything significant after the regular season. That's Brian Kelly. If you think that's better than Lincoln Riley, then, then that's fine. I mean, go ahead. Put him in your top five. But it's just like, I don't know, it's embarrassing. Listen, listen, Everybody's right. been saying, "Wait till Lincoln gets a yep. defense," and exactly. he That's just right. basically took the top ten defense from UCLA and had. I mean, the, the way that he talked about Denton Lynn today on the twenty four seven interview said that he's the best teacher he's ever worked with ever, yeah. and he's learned so much about teaching from him. We our defense is going to be literally night and day from last year maybe it's not gonna be a top 10 defense but it's gonna be like a top 25 defense somewhere around there in that vicinity depending on what the rest of the portal and stuff shakes out but the the defense is going to be so much better and our offense is still going to be solid so we're gonna we're gonna start blowing teams out like it's gonna be it's gonna be ugly the big 10 is (laughs) the big 10 defense is just they everybody thinks just because they all score like 20 points a game that they all have great defenses they're they're gonna be woken up when they see all of the offenses from the old back 12 teams roll in yeah it's just uh everyone that talks about usc negatively still thinks that lincoln uh, like we have alex grinch like they really just want to refuse the fact that we have a different defensive coordinator like oh you guys' defense sucks You're like 
like you guys do know we have a new defensive coordinator and a whole new defensive staff. Like we have an all-star cast, but they, they refuse to even acknowledge it. I can accept that from big 12 Billy and the idiots and the yokels that don't understand college football. But when you see guys that you respect, because again, a lot of these guys, they're not, they're not stupid, but they know, also know what Lincoln Riley walked into. I mean, they, 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 they know, and they still say the same things they're saying. They say, oh, you know, no defense here. But by the way, how many defensive coordinators has Lincoln Riley hired? One. Two. Oh, two. two. He inherited Stoops. Uh, yeah. Right? So, oh, yeah. so he's two now with Lynn. Yeah. Okay. And, and, Lynn, and Lynn with the second one. So, yeah, yeah he, way too long. Anyone want any dissenting votes? Yeah, way too long with the Grinch thing. I get that. Okay. But also, you know, you, you are allowed to make a mistake, a mulligan. And what's his next hire? He goes out and gets Dan Lynn. And so it's still up to this. You know, we haven't seen. We're all excited as fans. That's what we do as fans in the spring. We haven't seen his pieces come together. Just because they were great at UC, he was great at UCLA, does not guarantee he's going to be great here. Does not mean these pieces in year one with him are going to come together like they did year one with uh, with UCLA. But I will tell you, you know, he, he, he his dad, Anthony Lynn, you're talking about what a great teacher he is. He grew up his whole life a coach's son. And people freak out, do the nepotism, born on third base stuff. No, these guys are coaches' sons. There's a reason why they're so great. When they were in middle school and you were playing, I don't know, video games, they're sitting at the dinner table talk, probably drawing up stuff on napkins with their dads who just happened to be NFL coaches. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. right. these are the things you got to realize. They grew their whole life. And I'm sure dad was grooming, you know, their kids, you know, in their own footsteps. And if not, you're just going around, you're a ball boy or whatever, and you're picking up everything you've seen your dad do. You're, you're going to pick it up. And as I always say, apples will fall far from the tree. So if the dad has an aptitude to be a coach, it's pretty likely that one of the kids is also going to have that. And it appears that Lynn does have that. Yeah. And he also coached as part of the greatest defensive, you know, NFL coach. The, the Ravens are the, the best defensive team year in and year out consistently. They have turnover. They're still consistently legit every single year. He coached as part of that tree. He has that same level of like, Turnover, fine. We're gonna be totally fine. We're just gonna roll guys out, and we're gonna be we're gonna be solid, if not spectacular. They were spectacular last year at UCLA. They had some good players, and the rest of their overall talent probably not gonna be at the same level as what we have, rocking Cardinal and Gold this year. So they're going to they're gonna surprise people. They're gonna go in. They're gonna push people around when we start playing some of those teams when it's cold and all that type of stuff that everybody wants to say, like, it's going to be fun. Yeah. He learned from Rex Ryan, Rex. like one of the best defensive, head, uh, defensive minded coaches. It's just like, he's taking a lot from some of the greats and it's just, people just refuse, it, it, but it's fine. I'm fine with people underestimating us at this point. So we can just shock the world and make the playoffs and get over seven and a half, which what, People are claiming that we're going to win. So people are hedging now. If you've noticed, even even our buddy uh, at was at Hate State or wasn't that guy's name? I can't remember his name is, but you said it um, right. You you could you can see he's he's kind of pulled it back. He's kind of pulled it back about well, you know, we don't know the pieces could be together. Well, you know, the other pieces. He's slowly. You can tell he's hedging his, his how he's running his mouth. The fact, I mean, I was talking to Gabe about that. The fact that he wasn't in the the top USC wasn't the top four. Or five uh, best defensive uh, turnarounds for as far as yeah. math goes concerned. That's, well, that's, 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 yes, yes, that's what I'm talking about. That's that's the intentional ignorance. These yep. guys being obtuse. That's exactly what I'm talking about. These guys know better. You know, is. is it whistling past a graveyard? Is it the fact that they're they're they're, they're scared? They're scared out of their minds yep. that they they don't really want to believe this is about to happen. These guys are old to see what happens to USC when they have alignment, when they have good coaching in place. They know they're going to have the athletes. They know what's coming. They, they know what's coming. So let's give it to them. They call shut up. Exactly. exactly. That's all it is, man. They see. This is what they do, man. They're like, oh, crap. It's happening. Yeah. SC's coming back. It's finally happening. They hate our sunshine. They hate our palm trees. They hate, they hate Hollywood. They hate everything about us over there, right? So anytime, any little shine that they can knock us for, you know, knock our little shine down, they're gonna do it. Because they don't want they don't want 
their guys to see. You know, when I'm talking about the SEC guys, they don't want them to see what's going on over here. Yeah. These national media guys, because they, because they know we're going to get every player that we want. It's hard to turn down SC, especially if you're coming from rural Georgia or something. You know, it's hard. You come out here and you experience these palm trees and this weather, and you're living good, eating good out here. You're getting a there top has been hey, boys. NIL. Yeah, that NIL be- education. I mean, listen. I put out a, a post a couple of weeks ago, man. We literally check every single box that a recruit would ask for, right? As soon as you they start seeing the the NFL development, that's yep. just that's going to happen. There's a reason uh, that there was a, a mantra through the whole spring boss. Well, as soon as you put together the staff, I must have heard development out of every coach's mouth, out of most of the players' mouths. And it's they're, they're they're keeping they're they're staying on message development development. Kids are hearing this. High school coaches are hearing it. And USC got the rep for being the school that five star players would come to. We, we we're not going to name the names. Five stars would come here, and they just wouldn't perform. They wouldn't develop. Now we know that that's not all in the coaching. There's some recruiting misses, um, but in general, uh, you know, except for the wide receiver position, right? I mean, we're not cranking out the 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 offensive linemen like we used to. And and until USC starts doing that and defensive linemen, until you start doing that, proving, you know, there's a reason why the you know, wide receivers go to Ohio State. There's, there's a reason why defensive linemen go to Georgia because they know it's a one way ticket to the NFL. And, you know, sure, the NIL bag is great and that's going to get the attention of a lot of players. But that alone and that's what they're going to see. I mean, you know, at, at Oregon, if Oregon's buying all these players, Uncle Phil's money, but not getting a lot of development, not getting a lot of guys to, into the NFL. That's going to start showing up again as well. And they're going to get that same label and that same tag. So yep. let it, let it play out. If, if, if I hope he can keep coach Henny for at least three years. I think that's <laughs> on the outside of how long we're going to see him here. Yeah. That yeah. would be like that. That's probably our best case scenario. I do believe we have him for at least two. Um, It would be a gut punch if we lost him in year one, <laughs> uh, you know, the way he's going to be recruiting and the, and the way that he's going to coach and develop. It's not going to be long before he gets a, a look from somebody somewhere at, at a um, for a head coaching position. I mean, I, I just I would be shocked. So, but we'll see. You know, I haven't seen really his dynamic. He, you know, to be a head coach, you do. I don't know. He just seems too nice. <laughs> he seems too nice to be a head coach. To be honest with you, but but um, you know, we'll, we'll see how long we can hang on him for because we keep him for three years. We put a couple, you know, guys in the first five six picks of the NFL draft, then. Our, our USC will be back for sure. Yeah, and then we also have uh, we also have Skyler. I, I can't remember his last name, but his buddy that came with him from uh, from the Rams. He could be the next one up after after him. So yeah, Skyler yeah. Jones, yeah. Skyler Jones. There you go. Or Aaron Donald. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, bro. Game. Yeah, you should Gabe. be sorry that you're late. You knew what time started, dude. Did, did he beat Slap Happy? Is, did he get here before Slap Happy? Slap Happy is not here. here. Oh, because that's when you're officially happy. late. If you're First here time. after Slap Happy, then you're officially yeah. late. That's right. yeah, yeah, that is true. Yeah. <laughs> I've watched enough to know that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and where's tape at? Like, my guy, you are our MVP of our of our chatters, and we haven't seen you. He at the portal. Yeah, hopefully- as well, man. We need to put out an APB for him. All right, man. Anthony James is still rocking with us. So. Yeah, yeah. Man. <laughs> but yeah, man. Like you said, Tim, man. It's, it's just it's annoying, but it's kind of it kind of sweetens the pot, man. Going into this season because we know we're gonna what we're gonna do. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're, 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 we're definitely setting the we're setting uh we're setting the stage with this first game against LSU. Yep. By the way, Tim, are you going to be at that game? I'm going to be at every game I can get to. Probably short of maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to be at every game. So that's oh. the plan. <laughs> for the devil. Yeah. He has a rise. See, we, 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 we have summoned him. We said his oh, name wait. three times and he appeared. That's probably yeah, it. If you, say, if you say slap happy three times, he shows up. <laughs> We got, we got Jeff Rodriguez. He summons him. <laughs> yeah, Jeff's an OG. Yep. We appreciate yeah, you always know. fighting on with us, Jeff. Jeff Rodriguez is the chat champion. I don't think I've ever been yeah. to any, any, I mean, literally any USC yeah. show 
and I didn't see Jeff in the chat. He's I challenge you. Always always go to a chat and not see Jeff Rodriguez style. in the chat. He's always yeah. on your guys' show. So, yeah. It, USC Rock James. Boys, he's always that guy he's, everywhere. He's yeah. Blade show, too. So, shout out to you, Jeff Rodriguez. Appreciate it. All right. So, what we got next, man? What we got? <laughs> we got spring game preview. That's right. So, did you were you able to catch uh, any bit of practice? It's a, it's a no, last... uh, the the worst kept secret in the world. I try to say I'm in real estate, so no one stalks me. But I'm, I'm a school teacher by day, That's so really? um, okay. yeah. So and I write, and so I thought that Matt still has me writing, 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 writing. But um, yeah. I, so basically, when practice started today, I was in six periods. Put it that way. So so um. No, I, I wasn't able to see any of the practice. May I ask what grade you teach? Yes, I, I am I am crazy enough to teach seventh grade. I'm gonna be in high school next year. <laughs> I, I really enjoy no, actually, I'm not kidding. I, I really seventh grade is is an awesome age. They're not they're not cynical high school kids and you're not wiping noses, which again is, I've already raised three kids. I don't need to do that. So seventh grade's like a really good impact year. Kids are all messed up. You can really kind of can really <laughs> You can really mold them, you know, the way you want, because they've already been. Put, it's kind of like they join the it, when you go to middle school. It's kind of like you 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 join the Marines and they break you down, and then you get this kid totally broken down. He's just shattered. He's a shell. He's like freaking out on social media, and it's all you can kind of bring them back together and shape them. So it's a perfect age for you guys out there. Don't let them scare you well, away. Well, I guess you are forgiven now. Slap happy for the five dollars. Appreciate you. That he's paying his fine or his late. <laughs> Uh, no, Jeff, the Bosco, I, as I did attend Bosco, they have my Bosco records. They probably wouldn't let me teach. <laughs> probably, <laughs> for what I did my sophomore year, they probably wouldn't let me teach at Bosco as a lifetime <laughs> man. So let's say, let's I go there to expunge my, my, my sophomore year. I don't think I'll be able to teach. Maybe there. just make a public apology. and then that's yeah. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Do you apologize for what you did? No comment. <laughs> it's kind of i can lie it's kind of worth it so but anyway i'm sorry shout out to jeff for the super sticker appreciate you <laughs> appreciate you <laughs> Turn your mind. wait there's fines there are fines gabe there are fines they're self-imposed fines uh, uh michigan out there <laughs> yeah it's it's a uh it's you just you gotta have it no i'm not gonna say that it's a slap happy slap on the wrist you know what I love is you know, all the Michigan fans talk about how it's Cheeseburger Gate and this and that, blah, blah. Yeah, they're in, like multiple guys in the coaching staff got show cause. Multiple guys. And the one guy from the, the from the whole um uh lack of institutional control thing for USC, uh only McNair got the got the uh show cause and they sued the shit out of them because they did it. Yet half of the staff at Michigan's getting a show cause. I I love I love the way how Michigan shifts that one. Yeah, yeah. Right. Although I think I think by the way they give them a show cause just because they didn't participate. So that's a whole that's a whole different story. They can they can give you that in regards of what the regards of whatever the infraction is. If you do not participate, then I think they give you a show cause. Yep. Serb says we are beating Michigan. Book that. You can bookmark that. On. Okay. I'm uh, with you. I, I think if we uh, if we can match them in the trenches, absolutely. Absolutely. So this portal season will tell us everything. Right. That 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 nose tackle, those two nose tackles we get, that'll tell you if we're going to beat Michigan. Yep. Because you know they're going to yep. run right at us. Jeff, are you are you bullying Slap Happy into paying us more? But <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so let me yeah. ask you guys, man. What, what, give me. Uh, we'll go around the board. We'll, uh, give me a few things that you're looking for in this uh, spring game. I'll start with you. Uh, I go first. I'm in the corner. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, I, I've been saying that I want to see the line play both ways, right? I'm, 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 I'm bullish on you know from the middle on to the left. Uh, I, I think I think Pregnon's going to be actually going to make a big leap this year. Um, I'm going to be interested to see the the right guard play and then just to see Mason Murphy and Tobias Raymond at right tackle. That's that for me. I'm looking at because. They're going to be under heat. I mean, because I do believe that you know we're going to see. You know, we know that what our our our, our um, ends are going to they're they're going to they're going to be all over the place in that game. I think they're going to pull, pin their ears back and go. I want to see how well the offensive line can hold up. 
And then I also I want to see because I think you you've got some sides in the middle now. I want to see how well our our interior of our defensive line as it stands right now holds up to our blocking in the middle. Th- those those are two huge things. And then the defense. Everyone's looking at the defense, right? I want to see the linebacker play, you know, because that was a big disappointment last year. I think that uh, we're going to see them play fast, play nasty. So, um, how physical will they let them be? And how, you know, do we know yet what's what's going to be the format? That's no, that, that'll right. go a lot into it as well. If we're playing patty cake, then we're not going to see anything. Yeah, I just heard a half half of football, yeah, half. and yeah. that, that's it. So hopefully we do see some tackling. I don't want to see what I saw at, at the Ohio State one on on yeah. Fox last week. What so. uh, tack football? Yeah, yeah, whatever it was. Two can't touch. Blow the whistle. Some plays over. Football. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, just line play, really. I, really that's what line play and the, and the linebackers. How will they? Right. How, how will they? How quick they play? How quick they play in the scheme? Right. Honestly, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I was just gonna say the linebackers position. I'm pretty interested in see how that's gonna look uh, with uh, Gentry. See how he's being utilized uh, in uh, Lynn's uh, scheme, and then uh, um, Mason Cobb and um, the Arnold brother as well. See how that looks like. So pretty excited about that and. Uh, you know, I just wanted to be, see Gentry be disrupted just because he's so unique. I don't think no one else in the country has that type of player. He's a unicorn, in my opinion. So just curious to see how that's going to look like with the uh, Lynch scheme, the Anton Lynch. Right. Gus? Yeah, I mean, the first thing I'm excited about is seeing the, the Coliseum. Uh, first time I'm going to be there this Saturday, so it's, you know, my shit a tear. So just a heads up there, boys. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> excited about the lines both sides, just like what Tim was saying. I mean, that, that's, you know, been the focus really all off season, obviously last year as well. Um, but interested to see what uh, Jaden Maeva looks like. Um, you know, we've heard some some stuff, but interested to see him live. And, um, you know, he's a gunslinger, um, so he's going to be definitely – throwing that ball uh, by the way that's chat, pretty much it for me can i break in chat we none of us could there afford gabe all right he's just like <laughs> he's like up here you know we're just trying we're just we're just trying to ride his coattails so no no one can quite afford uh trojan blade so if you guys want to pony listen if you guys drop a couple thousand dollars i'm sure that the light torch guys would be able to afford gabe then so hit get, get those go, super man. chats in and so they can get the war chest to bring on through, Gabe through the portal. So that's that's what you need to do. Join join the uh, light the torch uh, uh, collective, as we'll call it, and you start start dropping oh, yeah. start dropping those donations, and we will have him in the portal very soon. They got me for a, a box of baseballs and some bubble gum. So I mean, uh, I'm, I'm anyone can afford, anyone can afford a guest, guest appearance for me, but to get Gabe on here, it's gonna be, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna take a, a team effort, you guys. <laughs> So it's kind of the best we could do, man. Yeah. <laughs> so like me until then. We we have a goal that we need to uh reach. Five thousand. That's about right. That's what he told me. Yeah. All right. We'll see you in a year, yeah. Gabe. <laughs> Make sure there's no inflation with that, all right? Five yeah. K. <laughs> Internet doesn't not right. Internet right. doesn't forget. <laughs> For me, I, I'm I'm hoping to see some physicality. I mean, uh, it looks like in the comments that uh, Keely and uh, Cody Kessler were talking about that. I didn't see that later or earlier today, but I'm excited to see some physicality. I want to see the defense be fundamentally sound, as they've talked about a lot. I know they're going to still make some mistakes because it's been a slow install as much as we've, you know, we've, we've heard that many, many times so far throughout spring. But I just want to see – fundamental defense see yeah. them be able to wrap guys up be able to make the make the consistent fundamental play over and over again and you know it, it, it's practice you know we are seeing them still get out there and and and, and practice essentially uh, but i want to see i want to see them hit each other i want to i want to see i want to see some physicality they yeah. it's going to be fun to watch you could tell tyler's been listening to the coaches because We've been hearing physicality from Entz. We've been hearing physicality from Lynn. And then today I asked Belk, and Belk said consistency. I said, what are you looking for? Number one, is it's a tight cornerback room. What are you looking for in, in these corners? He's, he's all consistency. And so you're hearing also from Mascarenas Arnold, middle linebacker, where they seek for him, why they like him. 
because his bad plays aren't catastrophic. They see consistency. So, yeah, I, I'd like to see that as well. Yeah, I'd love to not see a 70-yard touchdown every half of the season this year like we did yeah. last year. Um, so, yes, uh, sign me up for that. Yeah, didn't Lincoln Riley say the same thing about Sellis too? Like his bad plays weren't like like egregious or anything like that. So yeah, that's right. Um, it, yeah. yeah, I just I just want to see uh, competition. I want to see the competitiveness. Like we know that they can tackle, especially or at least after that Louisville game. So like like that was the first step of showing improvement on the defensive side. Now we're just I want to see them build on that because uh, Taylor Mays did a great job uh, with, with that defense last year, that secondary, like they were lights out. So I, I just want to see them um, build off that. And I, I definitely want to see Miller Moss, like the more control of this offense that he has. I, I want him to be like telling people to go here. I, I want him to like, really, I want to see him really take control of this offense and show why uh, we all think he's going to be, our starting quarterback. Right. Um, and that they're sleeping on him because they think Jackson Arnold is a better quarterback than him. So, and, well, he has five stars, right? Oh, he's got to be better. Yeah. Nico is better than him. And like, and what's that court, uh, that quarterback from, from Penn state. Oh, Aller. Aller. That's, <laughs> yeah. Like, how, how they have him in front of him just because they've seen more of him, sure. But like, we only saw one game of Jackson Arnold and he threw like three picks, didn't he? Three picks, like, one of them was a pick six or something. Like, they 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 saw like just a few touchdowns from him and they just automatically thought he was better than everyone. But was that in the spring game? The other spring uh, game already? No, uh, that was there. There's, there's there's a Saturday. Game. Remember though, you guys, you have to remember that 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 freshman and sophomore, especially at a quarterback and and like let's say either either line, those jumps from their freshman year to their sophomore year is just is like massive. True. But but again, yeah, not impressive. So yeah, but see, this is going to be basically Miller Moss's, I would say, sophomore maybe. Eh, I, I don't know, but he's just he's going to be showing improvement. He's been in Lincoln Riley's offense for two years already. So he's definitely three springs. Yeah. So he should have full uh, control of this offense. You know me, Gabe. You know my love for the Sooners. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to see. Uh, how Anthony Beavers will be used, man, in this defense, oh, as well as uh, Eric Gentry. Those are two guys that are very versatile. And you uh, can definitely move them, you know, a few different spots. So I'm, I'm interested to see what DeAnthony Lane does with them. And, uh, of course, you know, the trenches. You know, like everyone else said, man, that's, that's number one. That's going to tell us everything going into uh, the offseason. The more we need to do as far as the portal. So, uh, yeah, that's a, let's see. Anybody else? Gabe, this is for you. <laughs> That's my sooner. I couldn't get up fast enough. Those are my sooner. Those are my sooner fans. <laughs> have we had any sooner fans show up in our chat? I don't, yeah. think, we I don't think we have. Yeah, well, there was an episode when um I think someone, yeah. Maybe. I think they were giving us crap. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been not a while. Necessarily but, a bad thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, careful what you wish for. Right. Yeah. We we have a we have our resident Ohio State fan. Yeah. I do too. He's my boss. Really? <laughs> Oof. He probably thinks that they're going to win the national championship this year, doesn't he? Every year. Well, to be fair, though, was, they, uh, they got to be a favorite this year. They're, they're, yeah, they're this year, got a good reason, man. Yeah, this year, you know, they've, they've got and and quite frankly, for the past fifteen years, you know, they've got a good reason to believe they're going to win the national championship. So. Well, yeah. well, we'll see if they can actually get past their rivals. So let's just hope they keep Ryan Day. That's the one thing probably holding them back. So, <laughs> yeah. not so on the, the quarterback situation yet, man. All of them look pretty. Uh, so, what, Serb, what, what do you guys think about this? Serb says, "Man, I wish Jackson Dart stayed. Love that kid." How do you think Jackson Dart would have been in Lincoln Riley's offense? Do you think he'd be better than what he is with? With uh, with Lane Kiffin, 
Hmm. I, I've got all respect to Wilfred Kiffin's uh, offense, so you know it's hard to say that. Uh, yeah. Receivers, you know, I don't know. I like, I like, I mean, I think Miller is going to prove a lot of people wrong. Okay. I just do. You know, okay. I, I just think that we have to remember he doesn't have, he doesn't need to be Caleb. He just yeah. needs to be Miller, and he needs to run that offense like he just did. As great as Caleb was, we haven't seen even in the games where we should have cruised, we didn't see the offense looked that easy as it did for Miller. And that wasn't yeah. just a Swiss cheese defense at Louisville that, that he had to go up against. So, um, and it was a makeshift line and we can go down a list, you know, and all the guys that didn't play in that game. I mean, there was, think about that. No, no B rice, no, no, no uh, depth really. So, I mean, I, I think that the think that um, Jackson dart is awesome. That, that would have been great, but also he was like, whoop, he left so fast, you know, so yeah. it was, as soon as he knew that, that, um, uh, that he was got to have a competition with Caleb Williams. He's like, dude, I'm out. But then you have a guy like you have a guy like Miller that, that sat through, knowing he's not going to play for two years. Loved SC so much. Heard in the spring that SC's bringing this guy in or this guy in. He said, I don't really bring. It. I'm going to compete in the spring. I yeah. mean, you just got to respect that kind of stuff. And you know, it's all great in Hollywood, and everyone's going to turn on him if he loses three games. Not me, but every, the whole fan base is going to freak out because yeah. they're going. What's what's the favorite position? We know this. We're all USC fans. What's the favorite position on the team? backup quarterback always they love everyone going back to the, the, the sanchez you know going yeah, going back just yeah. going all the way back it, it's like, david booty too well no booty was the villain for some unknown reason one of, one of the better quarterbacks we've ever had he got everyone wants to villainize him because of when he got his when he hurt his throwing arm or his hand his on the throwing yeah. arm yeah and he he refused to go out and they think that uh we would have won if we would have put mark sanchez in there so I think that's why people didn't like him at that point after his first year. Two things. Name me a starting quarterback that will will pull himself out of a game. That's one. I know. Two, right. that's <laughs> not the quarterback's job. That's right. the head coach. That's Pete right. Carroll. Yeah. So. Pete Carroll, that was his choice. He knew his hand. The trainers looked at the guy's hands probably backwards and crooked and all mangled and stuff. They said, ah, run him out there. You know what I mean? Right. What did that say about hey. uh, where, where um, Sanchez was at that moment? I mean, really, yeah. honestly, because yeah. because yeah. if you're, if you're gonna leave it, roll a guy with a broken up. thumb or dislocated or whatever the situation was with his hand, that tells you what confidence Pete had in in uh, Booty. Plus, you remember that game; they were down the goal line at half, and they could have kicked the field goal, and they didn't, and they went for it. And I think they ran out of time. I think they think they ran out of time, and they didn't score. And so that, that doesn't anyway. Yeah, don't, don't get me started about that season. That kills me. <laughs> or that game, for God's sake, that game. I, I feel Caleb like did the same thing with the pop Tammy. So right? yeah, it, you can't you can't pull him out. Like he couldn't move in the pocket, and making him one dimensional still can make things happen. But you know his versatility, his elusiveness was obviously elite. So yeah, and you just can't pull those guys out. Like he's got heart and. You know, they all do. That's what yeah. got them there. So after watching that holiday bowl, it kind of makes you really now go back a year earlier and think, say, what if, you know, what, what if <laughs> they, they, they would have pulled Caleb yeah. and, and let Miller do his thing. Now, remember though, that, that there was a lot of injuries, you know, and, and Voorhees wasn't playing yeah. and a lot of guys in that line were playing broken. So, I mean, maybe it might yeah. not have made much of a difference, but. Yeah, so no, Tim, uh, all of us have uh, all of us have thrown some predictions out for this year, but we haven't had you on to do that. What uh, what what does this uh, upcoming season look like for you? Snapshot of what we have right now on the team and our defensive and our yeah. nose tackle. So let's assume I'll, I'll I'll do one thing. We if you go if you'll allow me, let's assume yeah. we pull in somebody at least at least one nose tackle that is on par with rakes meaning not going to yeah. be all conference but he's definitely going to be just one step behind there he's gonna be a difference maker but not an all conference selection okay so let's assume we get that role that player uh I, I say usc is going to be at i'd say probably uh floor nine and three most likely if you if, if i had to like really really put money uh i'd probably have to say nine and three 
it's a brute it's a brutal schedule man it is it just is yeah i think they had a, a, a couple of tackles play. though on either side and then that change is quick though for me yeah there's a lot of winnable games i mean there's a lot of teams that you know they're they're going to be close games like you could see i i don't see anybody that you know is definitively going to going to beat us um so it, it's nice to see that we can play against a whole lot of different teams because yeah i mean if if we don't have some sort of nose tackle then going into the big house and playing michigan is is not going to be fun watching donovan edwards just run up the middle and get seven yards every single carry but i i totally agree with you i think we'll have some sort of some sort of solution there um we need to have somebody to at least do what rakes did and i would say said for a long time i wanted rakes to kind of be the second unit guy and have somebody be the playmaker above him um so that's that's what my hope still is we'll see so i just worry i just worry i mean it does appear on paper when and obviously things will evolve because obviously rosters are evolving still for these schools but it does appear that the, the the toughest teams in the first half but if we don't have the depth that I'm talking about on the lines, because you know you lose offensive tackles. I mean, how often do you have your offensive tackles go through a season without being at least a little bit dinged up, you know, especially if they're going to be getting tons of reps or not going to get any, any rest. And then also at the, in the middle in defense, we're relying on, on the guys getting banged up in the Big Ten. I worry about down the road, down the stretch, where the teams are a bit weaker. But if, if, if our hard roster is banged up because of depth, which could be an issue on the lines if we don't shore up the lines, then you can see SC drop. That's why I said nine three because you see SC drop a game down the road down the road that they probably shouldn't drop. That's what I'm yeah. building into this little this little model in my brain is that there's going to be some attrition and I don't think we we just don't have the depth yet. So slap happy has said this a lot in our chat, so I'll, I guess I'll let you uh, have your your spot in the uh, sunlight here. Uh, who is our new Jackson Darts of 2026? I'm assuming that maybe someone that is going to be like a, a steal at quarterback that we got when we got him. I mean, if he's is he is he is he trying to like steer me towards Mayava? I mean, I don't, I don't know where what it, what he's going with it, but um, if I've, if you if I'm taking this as somebody that's going to kind of come out of like I don't know where, but just come out and really impress and just play really well. I think that Tobias Raymond has a really good chance, really good chance by mid-season or towards the end of the season. Uh, I know that it's, it's uh, they, they said Mason Murphy's going to be the guy early on, but I but I absolutely think that um, I, I really believe in in this offensive line. These these young guys. We talk about the t- sophomore wide receivers. I, I mean, I'm really impressed with these that sophomore that 2023 uh, offensive line class. I think those guys are going to emerge, and I do think. That Tobias Raymond, uh, they, they talked about that that Raymond is that guy that's they, he's a developmental piece. They knew he's gonna be a developmental piece. He came in, uh, he put on the weight, he needs to get adjusted. People don't realize you put on like 40 or 50 pounds in a year and a half, your body has to get accustomed to carrying that weight. And uh, he's working through that. And I think Riley teased that a lot. So by you know, midway through the season, I think that would be time. Uh, I, I just think that he's athletic, he's got good feet. Um, and, and he's got, he's certainly got the size now. He's got that prototype, uh, tackle size. I think he's going to surprise some people. Well, Ryder Lyons isn't even on the team yet. No, he hasn't, he, he, he hasn't even committed to, has he even committed to SC? I mean, before, he's before also, we start doing that, let's, let's Mormon, let him play so first. He's, he's going to be, he's going to be on a mission for a year or two. So we are not even going right. to, he, he's not even going to wear Trojan Cardinal gold until 2027, at least if he takes a one year mission, like his brother did, most Mm -hmm. of them usually take two. So that's 2028. So Mm -hmm. that's a long, long way ways until we uh, can see brighter lions. Um, A lot of decommitments can happen in that time too. (laughs) But if Jay's excited, I'm excited. So, so screw it. Yeah. Let's go with him. (laughs) Regardless of when let's just go with that. Do you guys think that maybe like in this transfer portal, if if there was a, a center that has a lot of uh, starting time at center, do you think there's a chance that we could possibly bump out Jonah Monheim to guard if there's a is a if there's a proven center that enters the transfer portal? 
I mean, anything's possible, you know? And, and, and he, here's the thing. He's, he's our most versatile lineman. Yeah. So let's say someone does go down. Uh, do you, they, they've been really happy with Killian O'Connor, you know, kill switch. So, I mean, <laughs> the, he, he came on, he came on as a, as a, as a walk on and he's on the precipice of getting that. I mean, if he does, he's most likely going to get that, um, that, that scholarship sooner or later. I, I, I'm really, I was excited about, uh, Roy's son, you know, Micah Banuelos. I think guy, guy's a monster. He's just got a, just a motor mean streak and looks strong as hell. Um, but he, he's had that injury. So when will he be available? Um, I, I don't know, you know, They'll be bad. I think they're, you know, Micah and he will be battling it out. Definitely now that Zanda Mello's out of the picture, it's going to be those two guys, I think, next year battling it out for center. Unless, as you say, they pull in some um, all conference center from somewhere that allows you to move Monheim to guard, which, I mean, who knows? I'm just talking about we just need, we just need dudes. <laughs> we need guys uh, tackle wise because that's probably where if we lose a tackle, and then we lose, you know, and then we lose. Uh, Raymond goes down, or whatever. Someone else goes down. They're gonna go right God to him. We lose Elijah how do we Page. absorb that? Yeah. Like if we lose Elijah Page, and we have to have somebody step in to be Governor Miller's blindside. Like, yeah, knock on wood. But that's that's just not a comforting feeling right now. You know, if, <laughs> like a Marcus Bryant did come in, and he played right tackle. If Elijah Page got hurt, he could move back to left tackle, which he's played before. So that would be a little bit more comforting knowing that we would not need to have two very green tackles, um, both sides of the line. That, yeah, Bo- that's a little, that's a little fearful. Bobby Haskins certainly wasn't Tyron Smith. He wasn't, you know, um, he, he wasn't Anthony Munoz. He, he wasn't uh, you know, any, any of the top tackles US has ever had, but he came in, he was serviceable. I think Matt's a little more, a little more, um, I don't know, rosy about him. Uh, but, but that, that really did save that line. That was a pretty good line. There's a reason why Caleb brought them everywhere. He knew that he owed a lot of that, a lot of that Heisman season to that line. That was a veteran line that played very well. Um, I, I would really like to see a veteran because if we do, because um, Mason Murphy's a, a veteran, but, and Mason's had a kind of a, a career that's, you know, fans have been all over him forever. He has had his moments very inconsistent. Uh, we're looking at basically then his backup would be Tobias Raymond, who's a true sophomore and, and the starting left tackles and our true sophomore. It would be nice to see some, some veteran, uh, some veteran depth at tackle. And I think that's what they're going to be looking for again, like, like a Bobby Haskins. Said, man, this uh, this portal class is gonna determine the outcome of our season, man. So, you sound really far away there, B Jones. Sorry about that. You know, this portal class is really gonna determine the outcome of our season, man. So, we we definitely gotta, uh, I want to say step it up, but <laughs> it would be nice to, for us to really take advantage of these guys, man, that that are uh, hopping in the portal. Yeah, yeah, Slap Happy's right though. Hit that like button. We only have 32 likes right now, so that's that's unacceptable for 113 people in our chat. But you got anything else, Black Jane? You say something? No, it's just like Gabe said that uh, the the depth is just is is terrifying. Like one piece goes down. It kind of throws off the whole flow, and we we were talking about that all last year that we were tired of seeing rotation, 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 like people like being swapped out for this. We want something steady, and right now, we if if one person goes down, then it's just kind of all up in the air at that point. Like there's going to be so many different pieces moving around trying to figure out who's going to fit where. Yeah, Gabe, I'm with you. That left side looks like it's solid i think I'm, I'm very happy with from and i know that we haven't seen monheim but i think that left side is solid and i do think there's plenty of toys and options at right guard um it's just nailing down that right tackle position might isn't proven yet i i know they'll i know they'll sort out the right we will have a, a solid right guard i know that with the choices they have um i mean i think probably if i were guessing what do you guys think probably alani noah uh you know yeah. Huge guy. Right now, and then you look at the size. You have Pregnon and, and Monheim. 
and Noah. That's a lot of human being in the middle there. Right. And 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 if we want to run, like everyone says, we want to impose our will. And you know, when Lincoln Riley's offense is really purring, it's got the tight end working and the running as well. It's not just all pass, 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 right? Yep. I, I think that with those three in the middle, <laughs> it says a lot of pounds in the middle. Uh, they should be able to impose their will and wear and USC should be able to wear down defenses with those. If those guys are leaning on you all game. You get into that fourth quarter, and you've been going up against those three big dudes. It, it's going to, it's got to wear on you. So the problem is they've got a lot of depth on their defensive line and especially like at Michigan places like that. So, but yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. Now that you talked about tight ends, uh, do you think who, who's going to, who you anticipate being our, starting tight end because there was a lot of talk about uh our freshman that we have uh right now uh i can't remember Joey his name Joey yeah, Joey Olsen. Olsen. Joey yeah. like that that's let's, ask, let's ask our fanboy in the chat about joey olson uh gabe no, I was kidding. Um, <laughs> uh a good reason to to be a huge fan i mean the, the kid's a prolific pass catcher and he is big he's he's and I'll tell you what, yeah, puberty is a hell of a thing because that kid just blew up, <laughs> swelled up over time. And um, I don't know. He's he's big. That's a big guy. And and if he can keep some of that pass catching ability, uh that's that's gonna be that's gonna be something special to watch. Um and, and Lake McCree's not, I mean, I know he's coming back from injury, but you know, he he's shown his I I was so surprised. Uh he's had trouble staying healthy, it seems like to me, his, his whole career really at USC. But um I'd like to see 100% healthy Lake McCree. I don't think we see that in the first half of the season, but that'd be great to have both of you guys come back. Yeah, see, like, yeah. Uh, it's it's been a while since we've had a very, very productive tight end. So, uh, I'm, like, what, since Daniel and Matter Baby? So, uh, like, it's going to be it's gonna be great to be able to say that we have a good tight end uh, coming up for this year. But we still also have uh, – What's his name? Walt. Uh, yeah. Matthews. Walker and uh, Walker yeah, Lyons. Yeah. Walker Lyons coming in, which Georgia wanted, and we were we went right into Georgia and stole Matthews, right? So I mean, yeah. the, I'm sure he was he was uh, high on their list as well. So I mean, I was mm-hmm. talking about defensive linemen, but tight ends at Georgia as well, and we've been able to go there and pluck uh, you know a guy they wanted, and then also a guy right out of their backyard. Uh, yeah. Georgia fans will tell you they didn't want him, but right, uh, the guy's huge. You should have heard. Coach Hansen at practice on Tuesday, he's just glowing about you know how how big he is, and he just he just said, man, his size, just his size alone, I can't I can't wait to get him on the practice field. So yeah. I think yeah. I, I really hope that tight end just opens up. Shout out to and Benny Wiley. Are gonna be nuts. I, I would like yeah. to see a before and after with uh, Joey Olson as well. Like you know how they've been posting those pictures of like the weight gain that everyone's been getting. Like I bet Gabe has one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna keep coming, uh, game. Oh, I mean, he's gonna get me back for this so bad. Uh, uh, he's gonna get me. Uh, he's not wrong though. It is stacked with talent. We do have. Oh yeah, our, our tight end room. Yeah, Kate Eldridge. Is yeah, huge too. So, like, uh, Tabarachi. Well, he's he's more of like a fullback slash tight end. Yeah. Just, I don't know anything about him, but he was not present today. Could could definitely be hurt. Not not sure what's going on there. Just just the heads up there. So, but yeah, yeah. Well, we were hearing that Bear was hurt as well, nagging. Yeah, he. Yeah, I saw him. So so I mean, yeah. Take that. I don't want to spread or start rumors or anything, but this is it is the season in that tight end room. No. But again, he is a, he's a bit different. He plays a different role. He's True. more that, you know, he's not that inline tight end. He's more like the H back kind of guy that's yeah. gonna get yeah. uses athleticism um uh, and block really, you know what I mean, inside on those. So I, I I think he I think of all of them, you know, the other guys seem a lot very similar. He's the one that kind of has his own stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh shit, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> so sir, I'm not I I'm not gonna po- uh, show your your comment there because we all know how that's gonna go with us. But <laughs> yeah, oh, man. but I want to bite so bad. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. Look at look at I will, um. I will say something nicer right here. 
uh, being in uh, Dan Lin's scheme instead of uh, Alex Grinch's scheme makes uh, a whole lot more chances for Bryson Shaw to be better than last year because um, I don't think they're going to leave him out in coverage uh, kind of on his own on an island. I definitely think he'll be more of a box safety when he gets his opportunities because that's where he excels. So as long as we don't have him 20 yards off the ball, having somebody run down the seam right at him, we're going to be all right. Would you guys consider this a hot take right here? I was just looking at that. I was looking at that. It wouldn't be the first time. It would not be the first time you convert a, a a tight end to 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 a tackle, but um, I think he's too talented of a tight end to do yeah. that. To be honest, yeah, no, like yeah. seeing him play basketball, week of nature. Nah, yeah, we need that on the out or uh, go, uh, catch a passes. For, for our- I mean, if he you guys, if he continues to grow, I mean, th- th- this it's a pretty solid take. If he continued to grow, yeah, you know, all, all that athleticism, you know, I, don't, I we don't know what his um his reach is, his his arm. I'm sure it's not small, but there's a lot goes into being if you want to be an NFL tackle. And if he had the measurables with his ability, his frame, and he continues to put size on, I mean, it's not beyond the realm of possibility. Oh, I was, I was, uh, I saw something on Twitter when uh, I think uh, it was Jay Toya, I think, entered the transfer portal. Uh, someone from from Oklahoma was like, oh, your their bench is going to, uh, dip down uh, with our strength and conditioning uh, uh, with with Benny Wiley. I was like, have you not seen – like, I, I understand you're from Oklahoma and you don't keep up with USC as you say you don't uh, keep up with us. But it's just like people need to realize that Benny Wiley was just given what he was instructed. So They haven't given up yet. No. <laughs> but – uh, is an update from USC Priority on Toya. If you, first off, you guys aren't following him, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Life, but I do I, trust uh, USC Priority though. So. so it sounds like he'll be visiting on Monday. So it's good to hear. Yep, keep an eye on that. Oh, we got we we got a, a Sooner fan in the chat. Of Boy, course, his we? name's Billy, just like the other four hundred of them <laughs> in a. Uh, in Oklahoma. Oh, just Billy, Did I yeah. summon this person? I think I summoned you. <laughs> that, that's on me, guys. My bad. You did yeah. say it. They're, they're you. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah. You got some just Billy on you now. <laughs> yeah. You could never ever Herbert Soonzer. You did almost you got it, Billy. Try again, bud. Did you just have a stroke, or is that your guys' talk to the hand? <laughs> is that your guys' public education down there? Wow. <laughs> he said talk to the hand, dude. Oh, I think, you don't get any better than that. Oh, my God. So, 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 wait, are you uh, are you a six-year-old boy, six-year-old girl? What? Just just, just oh. let the whole chat give him a, give him a like, go here. <laughs> like, my, oh, my IQ is up. slowly lowering at this point right now. <laughs> oh boy well I, I, I'm glad you remember your guys' slacking that we gave you guys that year so that's good at least, right. you, at least you can remember that were there, were there linemen were begging them to run the ball and run the clock out <laughs> yeah that was hell of a game hey Billy uh, <laughs> we appreciate you showing up uh, you can go ahead and uh, give us a sub that'd be great like the, like the stream yep. appreciate you showing up since you guys love to uh, see what we're doing over here at SC, y'all, so much. We, we're we living rent-free in your head right now. Gabe, I think they're all related. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they all share their teeth when they need to eat their meals at night, too? You know, they usually Uh-oh. aren't enough for them to go around in that state. Uh-oh. I'm like, you guys are going to get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, who was it when um, Toya went into? I saw that on Twitter. I can't remember it, but it was one of the, it was one of the guys. Was it Kamari Ramsey? I'm I'm not sure who. It was Humphrey. Basically uh, gave the Humphrey, gave yeah. The victory yeah. sign. Yeah, yeah, Humphrey. it was Humphrey. So hopefully that relationship is still good over there. So. Yep. <laughs> All right. We got to we got to stop uh, the, the comments. Are what do you can see about all the um, right 
Stay out the comments for a minute. <laughs> it's getting kind of wild. Get in trouble. <laughs> I can't uh, focus. Just Billy, I'm sorry. Uh, we're I, I'm taken. So stop, stop your advances. <laughs> I I, I, uh, I just slap like... happy getting into it too. <laughs> I'm gonna put myself on mute. Just give me a second. <laughs> I'll right, let man. you guys handle this. We got to wrap this thing up, man. It's been over, definitely over time, but um, catch us at the spring game this Saturday, yeah. man. We'll all be there. Well, oh, except for Black and Chan. Sorry, hey. yeah. Yeah, been, uh, next... why, you gotta, why you gotta try to hurt me? Yeah, hey, and um, for He's everybody in the chat, next Fair week, enough. Thursday at 6 30 p.m. You can catch us uh, next Thursday. Marquise Gallegos, uh, dad's going to be on the show, Sam Gallego. Mm -hmm. So look forward to that next Thursday. Um, you know, feel free to, you know, share it with your USC friends. Uh, come in, you know, talk with us. So pretty excited about that. And like uh, B. Jones said, we're going to be out there at the spring game. So, you know, um, feel free to uh, hit us up on Twitter, whatnot. We'll, we might be able to meet with some of you guys out there. Brandon, I'll leave you a, a ticket at will call, okay? I'll do that for you. Oh, man. Just for you. Sorry. Tim, I'll yeah. <laughs> uh, Those tickets are hard to come by this year. So. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, when you do have Sam Gallegos on, can you – um, oh, is it Sam? Who's coming on the show? Yeah, yeah. Sam. 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 Yeah. Um, make sure you ask him what they feed their son because that guy got big fast. That's yeah. one of the, that's, that yeah. was one of those transformations yeah. – you know, those the, Bro, the high school kids coming in, he got, dude, he got, he's going to be trouble. I mean, he's already, you know, hell of a ball hawk. Now he's got some size on him. Yeah. Make sure you ask him what, what, what they're feeding him so we can feed the rest of the guys that. We've been saying it all this time that watch out for him. Yep. <laughs> yep. I yep. mean, we look at, it wasn't the highest rated class, but again, that's why I have my issues with the, the these, these, you guys do realize that all three of all three of the major uh, recruiting services are all located in Nashville, Tennessee, right? When I found that out, I went, "Well, really? All three of them? Yeah, two so. of them in the same building? Yeah. And two of them are run by guys that split off from the other company? It's all very kind of, you know." And, and, and we've said it for years: uh, the, the 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 five stars in California have been shrinking, yet we're still putting the same amount of guys into the NFL. So go right. figure that one out as well. Right. I I don't, I don't know how to. Figure that one out. But the fact that they the fact that they have guys like Gallegos, guys like Williams, like Celis Williams, uh, th this secondary group that we're bringing in, that it's, it's something special. They've been talking about uh, Marcellus, you know, every day at practice. So uh, yeah. we we know that that safety room is full and that cornerback room is full, but it won't be full for long. And we're going to see these guys come to the forefront. It's going to be something special. Yeah, people are sleeping on Braylon Conley too. Yeah, wait till he gets on the wait till he gets here, right? He's he's a summer guy, isn't he? No, oh, he's Braylon Conley. I'm sorry. I thought I'm sorry. I, you said Braylon Conley. I thought you meant um. Okay, who's who's the who's the corner they're bringing in from from Texas? Uh, Jarvis Bowright. Right. Jarvis Bowright. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. There's another Conley. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 from yeah, Texas, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I, I was. Yeah, no, yeah, Bray, Braylon Conley. Yeah. From oh, yeah. Actually, yeah, the, yeah. Sorry, you got me. You got me totally confused. Right, that's what I'm saying. Next up, I think Jarvis. I'm mixing both those guys up. Yeah, that right. whole group is gonna be is gonna be something like really special. And you don't hear a lot, but isn't Braylon Conley coming in the summertime, right? Yeah. My so, bad. That's on me. Wait, wait for yeah, him. Yeah. Wait, wait for the stories about him coming out. Yeah, I think he's underrated too. Yeah. And he's a hell of a Trojan. I mean, that guy. That guy's loving SD from a distance. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> Yeah, Jeff's also uh, Hayden Trader and Carlon Jones. Right. They're going to be fun too. Yep. Yeah, give Jones a year. He's exactly. good. You know, he's already thirteen and uh, at three thirteen. Three thirteen. Yeah, um, he has to even step foot on campus yet. Wait till he gets to Hawaii. We forgot to point. You still out. the? He's he's frozen now. Yeah, I'm frozen. <laughs> you you need that, but you do need to get. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how strong he is because they're they're talking about how uh, G Day is super strong as well, and he's a true freshman, but. I mean, some of these guys do come in strong as hell, but usually on that line, you need a year of strength to get up to that college line play. But you know, who knows? He definitely he has a size. It. You're right. He's so. been killing it in the shot put. Yeah. Have you yeah. Seen He's him? explosive. I mean, oh, yeah. that's what you want. You want a guy that's explosive, and that's, that, that'll tell you how explosive he is. So, 
Shout Wait. out to our guy Carlon Jones, man. Jeff, Jeff says Traders at three thirty. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Whew. Trader, Trader was. Yeah, I, I I interviewed him, and all the numbers that the that were in the whatever we saw. No, that's way off. He's like. Like he grew an inch and, and, and gained like 20 pounds. Shout out to He's, my Cherry Creek guys, Colorado. I'm excited for that. So we haven't had a, a Colorado offensive lineman since what Justice, I think. He was on campus as well. So is he? Check, check was Byers from from oh Jeff Byers, Byers, yeah, as well. He's from Fort Collins. That's way back. Yeah. All right. All right. So we're going to wrap it up. We'll see you guys on Thursday. Yeah. That's Shout it. out to the 141 people that we had. I think that was our peak. That's the highest that we've had. So shout out to y'all. But uh, I still see that our like, like, let's get the stream up to at least 50 before we leave. You guys are at 41 right now. So I mean, I guess we can leave. It takes five it. seconds, boys. Yeah, just, no. just, just <laughs> hit that no. like button. I'm, I'm yeah. refreshing the stream right now, seeing where we're at. Just come on. Yeah, and I appreciate you, uh, Tim, for, for joining us today. We yes, really yes. appreciate the love, so thank you for uh, joining us. I'm a big fan. I'm always in your guys' chat, so I might as well show yeah. up once in a while. <laughs> I mean, I'm here. I might as well put my camera time. on. You know? You're welcome anytime. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, right? Thank you, guys. I'm big fans of you guys, so yeah, you guys have me on anytime you want. I'll come by. Thank you, we appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, All right so guys. With that being said, we are going to get out of here. Fight on! Fight on! Fight on.